sorry. This is... Okay, so... Sorry. Oh, I'm Eric. I'm Anna. I'm Desiree. Samantha. I'm Sola. Of you know. Funny <laughs> <laughs> We're from Sac State. Alright. Yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. Oh, How cool. hard was the program back then? Um, well, when I went, it was, when it went back to six semesters, because it went, let's see, it was six semesters, and they went five semesters, because people accelerated, which my semester ended up doing, um, I stayed the full six, but there was an option to do five, and then I think after my class, they went back to four, and I think they're at four now. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, um, it's, I, I'm assuming it's the same curriculum, it's just more squished for you guys. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I liked having the six semesters, though, because I was able to do the preceptorship. I was able to break it up over two semesters. And I precepted here, which is really nice. So I was like, for two semesters, hey, guys. Hey. How you doing? Hey. You know? So it was like really good putting your face out there and making the connections and working with everyone. And I really like coming up here. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to ask you, do you like coming up here? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you do it all the time, yeah. so I'm guessing it's okay. Yeah. How long have you been working here? Um, I graduated in spring of 09, and then I got hired straight on here, so nice. um, for about four years now. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Has a registered nurse, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, UC Davis now only hires registered nurses. So um, I think the last batch of ADN nurses they hired was maybe last year, or like two whole cohorts ago. Mm -hmm. So um, all the city colleges, uh, I don't know what they're going to do. Uh, I mean, they can't work here. I, I, the other hospitals are hiring still, um, but I think I know some of my friends who are like getting into nursing school. They're thinking just going straight through to get um, a master's. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, a master's. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have questions? No. Oh. <laughs> How do you like working here? Um, I like it a lot. Uh, I have not been to any of the other floors. I've thought about floating to the other floors just to see what it's like. Uh, but just talking to some of my other friends who do work on other units, I feel like working up here, the nurses as well as the other staff like PT, OT, speech therapy, um, they all really help out and we all work together like a team. Mm -hmm. So it's not like it's just the nurses and sometimes it's just the nurse. Like I know that on um, some of the other floors, it's pretty much you're just out for your own. If you're not part of the clique, you're kind of like, eh, it's too bad for you, you know. Yeah. But here, even though, you know, people are friends outside of the mm -hmm. hospital, they hang out, It you don't get that here on this floor, at least that I've, I mean, when I've worked, I haven't noticed that. It's just everyone's always helping each other. That's cool. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I and like I said, I haven't worked on other floors, so that's why I kind of want to, just to see what it's like. I don't yeah. think I'm ever going to leave this floor until my body's just like, we're done. <laughs> but um, otherwise, I'm going to stay here because I just love it on this floor. And you get to see so much different stuff. Because even though we're the trauma unit, we're also um, the, it's not same day surgery, it's surgery um, patients. So, like, people who come in with, uh, appendicitis or cholecystitis or they're trying to rule out things like that they'll come up here too because our doctors are the surgeons mm -hmm. um, so we get a lot of donal things which is actually pretty helpful now in the real world because I had an uncle who had a hernia repair and then I was like oh I've done that I just had two patients this week who had that <laughs> and I had a friend who had hernia also and he's a young guy but I'm like oh yeah you can expect this this and this and then, oh yeah, and then my uncle also possibly has gallbladder. I'm like, oh yeah, I just had another couple patients like this. And because you have those abdominal injuries, you also get exposure to various tubes mm -hmm. that maybe other traumas don't have, um, like NG tubes, um, the um, drains. You always get drains when you have trauma because things are leaking things they shouldn't be leaking. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so it's just really good on this floor, I think, because we get a really good diverse population. Um, and then also being at the med center, we get patients who are more critical than others. So here on our floor, um, we get patients who should be at Kaiser, um, but because they're uh, level one trauma, they have to come to us. Kaiser won't accept them until they're stable. And some of our patients actually end up going to um, the ICU units at ICE, uh, the VA or the Kaiser. Mm -hmm. So here they're on a med surge floor, but you go to another hospital and they're considered ICU patients. So we get a really good broad spectrum um, or a variety of patients, and which is why I think Sac State does both 
med surge as well as advanced med surge on our floor. So um, it just depends on what day. Some days are like, you know, we have pretty stable patients. There are lots of walkie and they like talk and they're pretty stable. We're just waiting for a place for them. And so mm -hmm. poor you get stuck <laughs> walking around with them, you know, just to make sure they don't run away, even though that happened like the day before yesterday. Um, yeah, because it, it, it's like they're, they seem like they're okay because, you know, they're here, they're interacting with us, but, you know, daily living, you have to think, okay, they have to be able to pay their rent, pay their bills, get mm -hmm. groceries, make sure if they did have any wounds, they can take the care of those, take their meds to keep them stable, like the reason they're stable here is because they're on those meds. They don't take them, they end up, you know, falling or something, and they come back here, and that's what we get for a lot of them, and we just pet them. Yeah. <laughs> so, so. What do you think is the most difficult part of your job here? Um... For me personally, is time management, even still after all these years. So that's why when I see you guys on the floor and I'm like, the charting, the activities, you know, the skills, you will get those on the job. So don't worry so much about that. But the time management is something that you should really get down as nursing students because the habits you develop now will affect how you are as a professional nurse. And I feel like when I was a student, you know, I want to do all that stuff. I'm like, oh, let me do this. Oh, let me do this. And so, and and um, so in, in doing that, I ended up sacrificing, um, you know, good sitting side, go, I'm going to sit here, I'm going to chart, I'm just get this done, and then I'm going to do my other stuff. So I'm oftentimes here late um, charting, which is fine. I am okay with that because I know that at the end of the day, my patients are clean, you know, I provide my patient care, and the charting stuff, eh, well, it gets done because, you know, that's legal stuff. That's important too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, I feel like I'm here for the patients, not for the computers. Yeah. Um, but if you can get your time managed, like most of the other nurses here, you can leave on time and have done your patient care and have charted. So okay. <laughs> that's what I think for me the hardest thing is time management. Um, on this particular floor, as far as patient goes, it's probably the type of patients we get. Because a lot of them are trauma, they're broken. So you'll, you know, everyone knows that when you're in pain, you oftentimes aren't the nicest person. Mm -hmm. So some of our patients are not very nice. And then sometimes mm -hmm. substance abuse is involved. And um, depending on the substances that they've used, how long they've used it, it obviously alters the brain chemistry. And so they can be a little bit weird. <laughs> Again, something that you've learned <laughs> yeah. volunteering here. <laughs> um, so in that aspect, the um, it's a, it's more like a, psych social um, like interaction that's mm -hmm. what the difficulty is um, skills we again we get like I said we get a whole bunch of different stuff but we've got nurses of all different levels here and if we need help you can also call other floors like we have patients who are burn patients sometimes because there's like overflow or they're doing well enough they don't have to be in the ICU we'll still call the burn nurses mm -hmm. or if we get occasionally we get young young patients normally we don't though but if we do, we can call the peds nurses or oncology patients, and we can call the oncology floor. So skills like that, like those things are tough just because I don't know how to do it, mm -hmm. but I'm not so uncomfortable with that so much as like actually interacting with patients because we do primary nursing here. So if you are um, a primary nurse or someone, you're pretty much, you guys are a team. The whole time the patient is here, and if they leave and they come back, you're still a team. Um, you're just stuck together. So if you can't build that rapport, that can make your life really difficult as well as the patients, and that's kind of not what you want. So being able to work with difficult patients is a really hard thing, mm -hmm. I think. So what's rewarding about your job? Um, working with the difficult patients. Because <laughs> at the end of the day, like um, one of my patients the other day, he's here, he's in four-point restraints. Um, he's totally, he was totally confused. He's getting a little better. He's clearing up a little. I think antibiotics are helping. and. Um, uh, the withdrawals are kind of passing, or they're obviously passing, or he wouldn't be here. Um, alcohol withdrawals are really bad. So if you have mm -hmm. friends who drink, let them know that. It can kill you, like literally kill you. So um, uh, he was in the ICU. He got stable. He came here, and like yesterday, he's doing better, took him out the restraints. Um, and so by the time that I left, we had developed a good rapport. Like he, like, I want to thank you so much for everything you did. And he, like, grabs my hand. I'm like, oh, this is going to go good or bad. And he, like, kisses my hand. I'm like, oh, okay, that was good. I'm okay with that. Thanks, you know. So, like, that was really rewarding. Um, and just, again, the skills, even though I'm like, yeah, it's not that big a deal. It kind of is when you master something. You're like, ooh, this is great. <laughs> so, and, like, even now, um, still when I get IVs and, like, blood draws, when I get the blood, I'm like, oh, I did it. <laughs> even after all these years, I'm like, yes. Because um, everyone's different, and you never know when you're going to get it when you're not. And I'm honestly not that good at it. 
So when I can get it, I'm just like, it's another little victory. <laughs> and then um, did, and just making sure that people are comfortable when you leave. You know, when they, they say, you know, I had a really good day today. Mm -hmm. Like, that's also rewarding. Um, what's your schedule like on a daily basis? Like, what do you do from the start? Um, so we get here, and like I said, um, they like us to be here at 6.30 so we can do our prep um, and our write-up. Um, you guys are in the program or pre-nursing? Pre-nursing. Pre pre-nursing, okay, all right. Um, so what I can do is uh, I'll grab a, one of the sheets in the other room. It's what we call our brains. You've seen us. We scribble uh -huh. on our papers. Yeah. And it's broken down, and everyone breaks it down differently, but we sort of write it down, and we have a little synopsis of all our patients so we know what that's about. Um, I try to get here a little bit before 6.30 because I, like, I have a routine. Like, I have to have these lines here. I have to have these boxes filled in. Mm -hmm. um, so I like to have that done. And then we get our assignments, and our charge nurses are really good. They come in ahead of the time. They're supposed to be here as well. Um, and I don't think they're paid for that time either. Again, that just is goes back to the whole, like, this unit really is about, like, a team unit working together. So people will come in on their days off and not get paid, but that's not, you know, why we're coming in. We're coming in because we're trying to make it better. Anyway, back to the story. So um, we'll <laughs> fill out our brains and then write all our patient information down, and then we'll go out to the floor, and we start report at 650, between 650 and 655. So you're going to find the nurse who was taking care of that patient, and then we'll get report. Um, we do bedside reporting now, so we'll go into the patient's room. If the patient wants to be woken up, we'll wake them up and say, hi, I'm going to be your nurse today. This nurse is going home. You know, Can we get you anything? Do you have any questions? Have the doctors come in? And then we'll do a check of equipment, and then the off-going nurse will get, give a report to their other nurses, and we'll get a report from other nurses. And you'll see all your patients. Um, and then we'll do the vital signs, the assessment, and then um, breakfast comes around at 7 30 usually. So it's like a frantic rush because you're trying to get your vitals and your assessments in before breakfast comes. But if it doesn't happen, you just do it afterwards. Um, patients hopefully will eat or we'll have to help them eat. Again, because we have broken patients, they can't use their arms sometimes or um, they're at risk for aspiration because of a head trauma. Mm -hmm. So um, it's not safe for them necessarily to feed themselves because some people, you know, they really want to eat, but they have to sit upright, they have to sw swallow, you have to make sure they check. So um, in those cases, we'll have to feed those patients. So that kind of um, adjusts how your day flow goes. Uh, and then after that, we'll do medications because most medications are done at 9 in the morning. Um, that's sort of hospital standard time is 9 a.m., 9 p.m. for meds. And then after that, um, in between all that is the charting. You always squeeze in charting somewhere. Um, if you get all that stuff done, then you move on to, um, for me personally, I'll try to move on to hygiene, you know, doing the baths, getting them cleaned up. Um, if you get that done, um, and there's still time before noon when we do vitals again, um, you can walk around with the patients, or we'll walk around and we'll just see if other nurses need help with anything. Um, which again, on this, I know we do it on this floor, I don't know if they do it on other floors, I'm assuming, I'm gonna hope they do, or just like if you've got downtime, um, you're just, you know, asking the other nurses, can I do anything for you, can I help you, you know, just checking on patients, um, even if it's not your patient, you see it's a patient who's trying to scramble out of bed, you don't want them falling, that's like a big yeah. thing, um, you don't want them staying here longer, so it's just sort of, oh, let me help you get back into bed, if you see lights, you know, just sort of helping out, um, and then we do vitals again at noon, and then, Hopefully, if you have all that stuff done in the daytime, then you'll have some more downtime, and you can, like, do um, any assigned projects we have. And if not, then you know, you, then you do the baths or the patient education. Um, and then 1,400 or 1,600 rolls around, you do vitals again, and then we get ready for the end of the day, um, which is getting our sign-outs ready. And here, we put still do... Um, uh, we still put things in the computer, so it's sort of like a reminder to us to tell the night shift nurse certain things that have happened in the day, like this patient got bathed, or this patient walked around, and you know, yesterday they didn't, so it's safe for them to walk to the bathroom with someone, with a walker, with physical therapy, just so you know, like it's an update and um, the night shift knows. And then after all that's done, um, uh, oh, I forgot, noon time is also lunchtime, and then 1700 or 5 p.m. is when we do dinner. So again, if you have patients that need to be fed, um, we try to feed them, and if we can't, then we have lovely volunteers who come around and are like, do you mind helping us because we're drowning? <laughs> um, and then we'll get all our stuff ready, and then we'll report off to the night shift nurse, and then they do the they do their thing. I've only did one um, schedule all night, so 
not so familiar with what they do on nights. But, I mean, obviously the same thing. They come in about 6.30 in the evening, and they do their sign-outs and then um, get report and do all that. Um, with night shift, you want your patients to sleep, so it's like a rush to get everything done at the beginning of shift, like all the wound care, all the meds, all the comfort stuff if they need it, and then you try and let them sleep, and then it all picks up again. I want to say about um, 2 a.m., but again, I'm not totally sure because I haven't done night shift in a very, very long time. Um, but that's when they do the blood draws, and if they have to, um, if they didn't do the wound care earlier on, you know, they do the wound care afterwards, um, when it's a little more closer to daytimes, and that's also physicians, like the orthopedic team, they typically round really early in the morning, like three, four, five in the morning, um, and then the surgeons will come around, um, on our floor, our doctors round around five o'clock, well, more like six, seven o'clock. So they, the doctors tend to come around while we're doing our change of shift report. Sometimes the night shift nurses will catch them and they'll hear, you know, what the plan is and then they'll report to us too. And then immediately when you turn yeah. So, you say it all doesn't sound that busy, but I swear it's way busier when you're on the floor. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we don't have, um, I think the reason why it's, uh, it's difficult for me to do time management also is because we don't have assistance unlike some of the other hospitals have. Um, so it's hard for us to establish that because I think with like, if we had aides, we can say, all right, we'll work on a plan. And that's something that as RNs we do, you know, you delegate and then you also are in charge of, you're in a supervisory position of aides or LVN. And so you can, you know, you essentially have your own little team and they used to do it here at Davis, but now it's just primary nursing. So it's just registered nurses. There are a few, LVNs, but they were essentially grandfathered, and they've been here for a very long time, so they have a lot of experience. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you can work with them as a team and say, okay, I'm going to do this stuff, and then, you know, you can do this stuff, and so that gives you downtime, but here, since we're doing it all, it's a little more difficult, and that's why it's nice that we've got volunteers, and we kind of make them work, sometimes not doing pleasant things. <laughs> <laughs> How many um, we are lucky in California where we have a ratio of, on med surge, you have a max of five patients. Oh, okay. On our floor, um, our, again, our charge nurses and our manager are really good at keeping this well-staffed and doing their best to keep us well-staffed. So at most, we usually have five, or we normally have four. It's only if people call in sick and, like, emergencies happen that we would have five. But at most, we usually have four. Um, and then if it's higher acuity, the charge nurses try to assign it so you only have three. Um, the ICUs, their max is two, and I think for peds, their max is two or three as well. Yeah, but for us here, um, we normally, at most, will have four. Yeah. And you said there was something about assigned projects. What are those assigned projects, like an example? Um, we have, like, um, for your license, you're required to continue education. Mm -hmm. For the hospital, to maintain your skill level, your um, man there's, like, mandatory things you have to do. So, like, if there's a change in procedure, like how we do um, insulin drips, I'm just thinking of the one that we just did, um, insulin drips for people who are diabetic and, um, like, it's so uncontrolled, we actually have to check their blood sugar every hour and change the amount of insulin that they're getting um, in an hour. That procedure changed, um, so we have to do the online module, and with some things, sometimes you actually have to do, like, a physical checkoff. Um, like with finger sticks, like when you get hired on, um, the equipment here you have to get checked off on. So like uh, with the glucometers, which you would do in nursing skills lab, you still have to do it. I think we would have to do it again here. But that we have to get checked up on every year annually just to say, yes, I know how to use it, I've been using it. And it's just so that if uh, JACO or the Joint Commission or um, any other sort of government agency comes through, they can say, how do you know that your nurses are trained and can do these things, or mm -hmm. uh, that they are qualified to use this equipment. So just sort of things like that. CPR was another one that we had to do in ACLS. So with those, there's an online thing. So you go through all the steps, you know, and then we have to go and we have to do a skills lab after that. Uh, and um, and then there's like updates on the hospital, like what's going on, and if there's any recognition or recognitions. I think Nurses Week is coming up the second week of May, I want to say. So uh, there was like information on that and the activities that are going on for Nurses Week. Um, 
And so we have to set the sign off saying that we read that kind of stuff because the hospital likes to know that their nurses are informed about what's going on in the hospital too. So just that kind of stuff. So currently in class we're learning about the three levels of prevention, primary, secondary, and tertiary. Mm -hmm. um, what kind of levels do you um, mostly deal with with your patients? Um, I would think that we do all three. Mm -hmm. um, just because obviously we've already come in, so kind of already had the accident happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but the prevention is obviously in the future, what to do to prevent it from happening, and then uh, prevention of complications of what happened. Mm -hmm. um, um, and then, so that's patient education, and then treatment of, so the reason they came in, taking care of that. So is that one of the, is that the secondary, or is that the tertiary, or no? Secondary. That's, that's, a, that's tertiary, I can't tertiary? remember. It's like care of, right? Yeah. Yeah. So obviously that's what we're doing here, mm -hmm. and then we're showing them how to do it. Nursing is just all education, mm -hmm. um, pretty much is how I take it. When a patient comes in, when you see all their lines and drains, um, obviously the IV they're not going to go home with unless they have like an infection. They might have to go home if they have to teach them. But every time I see the drain, I'm like, here's what we're doing, and I will talk them through everything that I'm doing, which is also why my time management is a little off, because it takes me a long time to do things. Because, I mean, in nursing school, when you get to do your skills, you'll see it takes a while because you have to manage you have to learn how to do all those things like pulling up, pushing, crushing, you know, mixing, and then um, like sticking things together. And that just takes time to get that muscle memory in. So you're going to have to be teaching it to someone else, and they've never done it before. Mm -hmm. So it's going to take longer, even longer then, because they've never even done it. And you're just starting to do it. So the two of you together, it's like it's going to take a long time. But then you'll see that it's worth it because soon, if they're here long enough, they'll be able to do it themselves, and you're like, I'm done, you know, you just have to watch them. Um, and then that's also, like, a, is that, and I don't know if that would fall in the prevention, because that's still care, so I guess that's still tertiary. But it, it's, it's, a, it's part of it because then they know also what to look for in complications, because I'm just thinking of, like, with tube feeds, um, that's something that is difficult for people because there's so many steps in it. And I know that you guys aren't in the program yet, so you're not, you haven't done that. Have you seen us give meds via the tube? Yeah. Yeah. So you know there's like a lot of steps. Like yeah, we have to, you have to get the meds, you have to crush the med, you have to get the fluid, you have to mix it up, you have to clear the tube, and then you have to make sure that the tube is good to use. So there's just a whole bunch of steps. And for someone who's never had this tube before, they're like, oh, there's a thing dangly here, and now I have to use this. It's like a whole big change for them. Mm -hmm. So just walking through all that stuff, it's just that education um, takes a long time. What am I talking about? Prevention. The prevention, that's what I was getting back to. The, just so that they get the practice so that they know when there's a problem. Because we can do and be like, oh, something's wrong here. They don't know that because they didn't, they didn't interact with it. They didn't know that before. There was a little bit of pressure when you pushed the medicine, but you did some you know, squishing around and the med went through. They didn't know that because they didn't get to do it. But if you're teaching them how, they can say, oh, this is that resistance you're talking about. So when they get home, they meet, they're like, okay, that's okay, versus, oh, this is bad resistance, this is not good. So that, you know, it's, it's so they know when, when to come back in, when to call their doctors. So that's the tertiary, that's like, you know, the prevention, or that's the care of, so they know what to look out for. Um, the secondary, remind me what secondary prevention is? Secondary prevention is when I guess they're already um, like they're already sick, but they're not at that level where they have to go to the ICU. They're, I think so. Okay, all right. So um, that is when we have rapid response and um, action, which is good. Um, if you notice that a patient isn't doing well, like if um, their urine output is low, or if their breathing is more labored, or if their bio signs aren't stable, or if there's just something mm -hmm. not right about them especially because some of our patients are head trauma patients, like, you may not see anything wrong, but they're just different, you know, like, they're just more agitated, or they're, like, meaner, or maybe they were really mean and suddenly they're really nice, which would be nice, but at the same time, you kind of have to wonder, like, is something else going on here? So mm -hmm. that kind of prevention, we're always sort of doing. It's not like a patient education unless there's family there. Then we, you know, while they're there, the family will, the family will pick up on that. Their, their family member, their friends kind of, being a little different. That's something you don't have to do too much education on. But um, for that prevention, that's we have the wrap and the action um, uh, teams.
in place for that, so they're good resources for us. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's all the questions. Yeah, okay. that's about wrapping yeah, it up. Thank you so much for spending your time.